Our prayers continue to be with the families of the three American servicemen killed and attacked in the FOB in Jordan. Sergeant William Rivers, Specialist Brianna Moffitt, and Specialist Kennedy Sanders. I spoke with each of these families separately, and Jill and I will be tomorrow at Dover Air Force Base to receive the dignified transfer of their bodies. That was the president speaking this morning in Washington. At the Pentagon, the Secretary of Defense said this. It's been a difficult few days for the Department of Defense, and the entire department is united in our outrage and sorrow over the death of three U.S. service members on Sunday in Jordan. We all mourn the loss of three Army Reserve soldiers serving at Tower 22. Sergeant William J. Rivers, age 46, Sergeant Kennedy L. Sanders, age 24, and Sergeant Brianna A. Moffitt, age 23. Our thoughts and prayers are with their families and their loved ones, and we know that this grief will never leave them. And we hope that they know that the department's love and support will never leave them either. We're also praying for the other American troops who were wounded. Now, our teammates were killed when a one-way attack drone struck their living quarters. And we continue to gather the facts about this deadly attack. Our fallen soldiers had a vital mission to support Operation Inherent Resolve and to work with our partners to ensure the lasting defeat of ISIS. They risked their lives and lost their lives to keep their fellow Americans safe from global terrorism. The President will not tolerate attacks on American troops, and neither will I. Our teammates were killed by radical militias backed by Iran and operating inside Syria and Iraq. In the aftermath of the vile Hamas terrorist assault on Israel on October 7th, terrorist groups backed by Iran and funded by Iran have tried to create even more turmoil, including the Houthis attacking commercial shipping in the Red Sea. So this is a dangerous moment in the Middle East. We will continue to work to avoid a wider conflict in the region. But we will take all necessary actions to defend the United States, our interests, and our people. And we will respond when we choose, where we choose, and how we choose. That was Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's first day back in the Pentagon press briefing room since he was hospitalized for complications following what was supposed to be an outpatient treatment for prostate cancer. He did something today we did not see in the four years of the Trump administration from anyone in that administration. He apologized. Lloyd Austin said, I did not handle this right. Lloyd Austin said, I take full responsibility. He did not just apologize to President Biden for not alerting the president to his medical condition sooner. He apologized to what he called his teammates at the Pentagon and he apologized to each and every one of us, the American people. And while he was at it, he delivered an important public health alert, especially to black men who are statistically more susceptible to prostate cancer. The apology was everything that a genuine apology should be. It was personal. Lloyd Austin took us inside his private thoughts that led to his mistake. And he took full responsibility for his mistake and did not just promise to do better. He described exactly what he's already done to make sure that such a mistake can never happen again. There may be no better way to take the measure of a man than the quality of his apology. And I say a man because we men, in my experience anyway, which may be different from yours, tend not to be very good at apologizing. The most perverse extreme of that is, of course, Donald Trump, who has never apologized to anyone in his life for anything. That alone certifies Donald Trump as unfit for any responsibility in any activity. For all of us, especially children growing up in the age of Trump who need a lesson, 
in how to apologize. General Lloyd J. Austin III, now Secretary of Defense Austin, gave us that lesson today while personifying the motto of his alma mater, West Point, duty, honor, country. I want to be crystal clear. We did not handle this right, and I did not handle this right. I should have told the president about my cancer diagnosis. I should have also told my team and the American public. And I take full responsibility. I apologize to my teammates and to the American people. Now, I want to make it very clear that there were no gaps in authorities and no risk to the department's command and control. At every moment, either I or the deputy secretary was in full charge. And we've already put in place some new procedures to make sure that any lapses in notification don't happen. In the future, if the Deputy Secretary needs to temporarily assume the, off the duties of my office, she and several White House offices will be immediately notified, including the White House Situation Room. And so will key officials across the department. And the reason for that assumption of duties will be included in writing. Now, I want you all to know that to know why this happened. I was being treated for prostate cancer. The news shook me, and I know that it shakes so many others, especially in the black community. It was a gut punch. And frankly, my first instinct was to keep it private. I don't think it's news that I'm a pretty private guy. I never liked uh, burdening others with my problems. It's just not my way. But I've learned from this experience. So taking this kind of job means losing some of the privacy that most of us expect. The American people have a right to know if their leaders are facing health challenges that might affect their ability to perform their duties, even temporarily. So a wider circle should have been notified, especially the president. Now, let me back up a bit. As you know, on 22nd December, I had a minimally invasive procedure to cure me of my recently diagnosed prostate cancer. And then I hit some bad luck during what is usually a pretty easy recovery. On January 1st, I felt severe leg pain and, and pain in the abdomen and hip. And that evening, an ambulance took me to Walter Reed. The doctors found that I had several issues that needed treatment, including a bladder infection and abdominal problems. On January 2nd, I was also experiencing fever and chills and shallow breathing. The medical staff decided to transfer me to the critical care unit for several days for, for closer monitoring and better uh, team care by my doctors. And the deputy secretary assumed the functions and duties of my office, which happens when necessary. Her senior staff, my senior staff, and the joint staff were notified of this through our regular email notification procedures. And I never directed anyone to keep my January hospitalization from the White House. On January 5th, I resumed my functions and duties as secretary from the hospital. I was functioning, functioning well mentally, but not so well physically, and so I stayed at Walter Reed for additional time uh, for additional treatment, including physical therapy, for some lingering issues with my leg. Now, I'm offering all of this as an explanation and not an excuse. I am very proud of what we've achieved at the department over the past three years, but we fell short on this one. As a rule, I don't talk about conversations with my boss, but I can tell you I've apologized directly to President Biden. And I've told him that I'm deeply sorry for not letting him know immediately that I received a heavy diagnosis and was getting treatment. And he has responded with the grace and warm heart that anyone who knows President Biden would expect. And I'm grateful for his full confidence in me. And finally, I also missed an opportunity to send a message on an important public health issue. And I'd like to fix that right now. I was diagnosed with a highly treatable form of cancer, a pretty common one. 
One in eight American men will get prostate cancer. One in six black men will get it. And so I'm here with a clear message to other men, especially older men. Get screened. Get your regular checkups. Prostate cancer has a glass jaw. If your doctor can spot it, they can treat it and beat it. And the side effects that I experienced are highly, highly unusual. So you can count on me to set a better example on this issue today and for the rest of my life.